we're going to work on uh, new coordinate systems which are going to help us a lot in parametrizing curves and surfaces. And the first new coordinate system we want to look at is polar coordinates, which means specifying the location of a point based on the direction that you're facing and the distance that you would walk from the origin. So we're going to talk about how do you, how do you convert points either from our usual XY Cartesian system to polar or from polar back. Recognizing a problem with polar is that there can be multiple representations for the same location, and how do we deal with that? Um, how do we interpret in inequalities that involve um, polar coordinates? How do we convert an equation in terms of x and y into an equation in terms of polar? And how do we convert a polar equation back to Cartesian? So those are the topics we're going to look at. First, let's just de define how you do polar coordinates. So polar coordinates usual coordinates, like let's say the xy coordinates um, 1, 1, we use just our regular Cartesian axes to locate our location. So we have x and y and we go over 1 in the x direction and up 1 in the y direction and that locates our point. The idea of polar is to pretend like you're standing at the origin, so think of that as, as sort of the pole you're standing there and the direction that you're facing is determined by the angle that you make with the positive x-axis. So in order to specify this location in polar, we would measure this angle, which the angle where um, x and y are the same, that would have to be pi force, right? So we have theta equals pi force. And then we specify how far out we would have to walk to get the, to that location. Since we're walking over one and up one by the Pythagorean theorem, 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2, and so the, this radius is the square root of 2. So, 2. So, in polar coordinates, we would give the answer as radius first and then angle, and the radius is, I meant to say the square root of 2 there, the radius is the square root of 2, and the angle is pi fourths. So, that's a representation of this point in polar. Now, if you think about converting between the two, there's, there are some relationships here that can help you. So, if, you, if we zoom in on the picture here, no matter what the angle is, this is going to be the x, and that's the y, and there's r, you can see that x is equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta just by our usual trigonometric ratios. These, are, these two equations are, are very handy. You should definitely know them sort of by heart. And um, they will easily take a radius and a theta and convert them to an x and a y. So you can always take a polar representation and easily get this xy representation. Now, if you have x and y, um, notice you can figure out the angle because the tangent of theta would be y over x. So this is nice if you know y and x, at least you know the tangent of theta. And uh, to find r, um, you can see that r squared has to be equal to x squared plus y squared. So these two equations are nice if you have r and theta, you can definitely get your x and y. These two equations are handy for finding theta and r. You can see that the solution to these may not be unique. There are many angles whose tangent um, can be y over x. Um, and um, there are positive and negative values of r that can satisfy this for a given x and y. So, let's see. So if we have um, polar coordinates we want to convert to Cartesian, remember the set that we need to use is that, um, oops, is that x equals, equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Let's look at an example. Suppose someone tells us, well, convert um, convert the location, um, let's see, how about um, the location 1 pi thirds to Cartesian. So you kind of have to tell from the context that this must be polar if we're supposed to convert to Cartesian, in which case you know the first number is the radius and the second number is theta. So the x-coordinate would be 1 times the cosine of pi thirds. Of course, the cosine of pi thirds you've memorized is 1 half, so the x-value is 1 half 
the y is going to be the radius, and the radius is 1, times the sine of pi thirds, and the sine of pi thirds is root 3 over 2. So we get this, we get this location then. In Cartesian, the x is 1 half, and the y is root 3 over 2. Hmm. Now one problem with um, Cartesian is that, um, or with polar, is that points can have this, multiple points can have the same representation. So here's an example that, that you can use to kind of see this. We're going to plot these points and we'll see that although all of them seem to be different coordinates, they actually can be specifying the same thing. So if you look at the point negative 2 pi thirds, that means that you should be facing a direction of pi thirds, so you're looking out into the first quadrant, right? But you're taking two steps backwards. We have a, radi a radius that's negative. So even though we're facing this direction, if we take two steps backwards, we actually end up at this location. So um, you can see that if we were to go to this point, we would also end up at that same location because negative 2 pi thirds, let's see, there's if you're, you're turning negative 2 pi thirds, there's negative 1 pi thirds, negative 2 pi thirds. Now in this one, you're, you're facing into the third quadrant, right? And you're taking two steps forward because the radius is positive. So you step two steps forward and you find that you're in the same location. Okay. Um, these two, this one and this one, you can see are also the same. In one, you're facing an angle of negative pi thirds, so you're looking out in the direction of negative pi thirds, and you're taking two steps forward, so you're going forward one, two, so you end up at that location. In this second one here, um, you're facing a direction of two pi thirds, so there's one pi third, two pi thirds, so you're facing that direction, but you're taking two steps backwards. So facing that direction, facing into the second quadrant, but stepping backwards would actually move you back one, two, to this lo same location in the fourth quadrant. So let's see, we can kind of see this general relationship. You could be facing an angle theta um, and walking out a particular radius, or you could be facing 180 degrees opposite or pi opposite and walking backwards, and you'd get to the same location. And in one, you're facing this direction and walking forward. In the other one, you're facing pi radians more or less. Let's see, I guess I should have turned that way, huh? So, um, since positive would be that way. In the other, you're facing 180 degrees more or pi more, but you're walking backwards. Still going to get you to the same location. Let's see. Um, also, let's see, facing an angle. And walking backwards from that angle is the same as facing an angle 180 degrees out, right? Facing the opposite direction and walking forward. So that's a case where we can get multiple representations. Another thing that can, that where we can have multiple representations is that the angle theta, um, just to face a particular angle, there are infinitely many representations of them. You might face the angle theta, but you might face the angle theta plus 2 pi, right? That's a full revolution or theta plus 4 pi, um, and so on. Or you might face the angle theta minus 2 pi. That's still facing the same direction, even though the angle is different. Or theta minus 4 pi, and so on. We could say that all angles that are equivalent would be um, theta plus 2 pi times any integer i, right? So i, an integer, whether plus or minus. And so that would that would give you facing the same direction even though the angle's different. So this is infinitely many different angles, but they all end up facing you in the same direction. So we can have multiple representations because we can walk forward or backward. We can have multiple representations because um, we can add always add two pi to an angle and get an angle that has us facing in the same direction.